Thank you for still being with us here on Plus TV Africa. And this is our news, uh, newspaper review program of the press, where we take a look at our national dailies, dissect it as much as we can, make sense of it. And with me to do so this morning is Barista Dotun Hassan. Good morning. And Annie Huvi Ayeni, who is also a social commentator. Good to still have you here. <laughs> All right, we have a couple of papers uh, this morning. We have The Vanguard, The Guardian. The Nation and the Punch newspaper. We will begin with the Punch newspaper. I believe it will be displayed on your screen uh, very soon. And so the Punch newspaper says banking hall queues return over ATM withdrawal limits. That's on page 28 of the Punch newspaper. Senate orders probe of Jonathan's $396 million refineries repairs. That story is also on page 29, already displayed there, thank you very much, of the Punch newspaper. Now, Khan's three-day prayer for Nigeria begins today. That's the Christian Association of Nigeria. That's on page 19 also. And reps invite IG, NSCDC bus over extrajudicial killings on page 43 of the Punch newspaper. And just on the top, top right there, it says, NECA protests as EFCC bars married applicants on page 27. And on the Malabo case, court orders ex-minister Etete's arrest grants a doke bill on page 43 of the Punch newspaper. Let's take a look at the big story. It says, Buhari Security Council Sean calls to fire service chiefs on page two. And just beneath that, we see, we didn't discuss National Assembly's demand to sack generals and others. I am worried, says Jonathan, uh, Senate leadership to meet president. That's on the front page there, uh, but this story is contained on page two of the Punch newspaper. 20 Plato Hetzman's victims mass burial. Uh, that's our story is there. You can see the picture story of uh, the coffins of the deceased there. And the story is contained on page 19 of the Punch newspaper. Three sentenced to death for Ocean Bank robbery is on pages four and five of the newspaper. PDP looks into Umahi Danjuma's endorsement of Obaseki. That story is on page 41. Looks into. Now, coronavirus, Lagos to quarantine Chinese returnees and World, World Health Organization now declares it a global emergency. It's on page seven of the newspaper. And sexual harassment, OAU panel recommends lecturers dismissal on page nine of the newspaper. Casina man chains uh, tortures wife for 10 months what kind of story is that? It's only contained on pages four and five. Please grab a copy and find out what it is about. And finally, Amotekun is shaping up well, according to Makinde on page eight. Where do we begin? Let me start with you, uh, Dotu, because you're to my left, and then we'll go to my right. Which of the stories is catching your attention? There's so many stories, so which one do we begin with this morning? Well, majorly it should be our security, mm -hmm. and um, we have to really take that because it's been, it's been a recurrent decimal that our uh, government is just um, um, approaching the whole issue with true fire brigade approach. There's no scientific methodology in dealing with the security issue, mm -hmm. and that's what led to Amoteko and other civil uh, uh, interventions in the recent time. And uh, the call for the the sacking of the service chief by the National Assembly mm -hmm. member House of Reps and uh, some senators were also especially the minority leader, which also called for resignation, mm -hmm. Mr. President, and that caused Very a lot of opera. Yeah. And uh, these are issues because we are talking about lives in, in millions that are gone, and there's no no um, um, measure at mm -hmm. sight in dealing answers. decisively with the issue. And it's becoming as if some people are trading on this issue of securities, as if billions are being expended without uh, 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 nothing to show for it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when the laws are not even followed to the latter, the expiration of the tenure of the service chief is, is long overdue according to the law of the, that, that, grant, that, that guy's appointment. And it's really going to have uh, a ripple effect in the service itself mm -hmm. because those that ought to, to get to that level of that, of the highest echelon in, their, in, the, in the military, Navy, are still going to be stagnant. Mm -hmm. So because somebody's interest is some, 
elsewhere. These are issues that needs to be considered. There, in the military, there is no specific perfect and everybody is in the matter of collective duty. So for Mr. President, there is a need for him to holistically consider being a former military, military general. He has that onus and responsibility to lead in view of what is operational in the military. He knows, he has knowledge. So it shouldn't be thought on what to do. We know the service chiefs are trying in their own beat. Yes, there's always been successes that are recorded. And it's as if the successes are, are just short-lived in the, just to gain some media um, some view. But lives now are being tampered with from the north to the east mm -hmm. to the west. No area is safe. So to speak. So, and I believe the issue needs a lot of collaboration. That is why, in, our, in my own view, I'm sorry, we need to also consider all this. The, we, our constitution is giving us a lot of problem, exclusively making defense to, to be centralized from the police. If you don't begin to have community policing from the ward to the local government to the state, different policing strategy mm -hmm. funded independently by those arms and tears of government. So if we don't begin to look at our laws in this area, mm -hmm. it will become an approach of necessity as solving our problem. And that's why Amotekun, it will survive because the people cannot afford their lives to be threatened mm -hmm. by maruders who just believe they have the, the will and the zeal to kill us without being cautious. So these are areas that the government needs to really consider. And there is a need for federal government to shut up with this lip service approach that we are on top of the game. Mm -hmm. There is no game that the government is on top. The only thing we need is let there be adequate intelligence, let our laws be reviewed, let there be funding, and there must be also be welfare of the officers at the front bar today, there is no welfare for these officers. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee you there is no insurance policy that protects an average policeman, that protects an average military man, because when they die, you see the ripple effect on their families. That's right. So these are issues that I believe we can, as we go on, we, mm -hmm. we share opinion. Yeah, let me come to you, and you, V. I mean, I see you nodding in, uh, <laughs> in almost affirmation. So what are your thoughts generally the security situation in Nigeria? Are we making headways? Like he says, we always hear we're on top of the game. We don't know which game we're talking about almost this time. And, and um, the challenge for me is that whenever the government speaks about how much they spend, they can spend one trillion naira, they can spend one trillion dollars, they always seem, it, the programs always seem to come from the top. Mm. and they spend it. Now, I, my question will always be, does our police force look like a police force that such amount of money has been spent? That's do a we very even, valid question. Do we even look like a country that has a budget of $29 trillion and it has been spent? Do we look like it in any way? Mm. Individuals are making headways. Businesses are making headways. And it seems as if the systems that govern what we are doing is still digital and um, analog mm. while people are moving digital. Fast so. The, the institution of security in Nigeria is not just the service chiefs and all of the institution of security in Nigeria that matters to you and me when I go to bed at night is that can I trust the policeman that is standing outside? Mm -hmm. Does he know what the security means? Does he look like someone that can run in case of any problem? How far can he run? How much do the police, how much do our military, how much do our service people still remember the ethics of their profession? That's right. The honor of their profession, the responsibility of their profession, what it takes to be a policeman. Now, when I see a policeman, I'm sorry to use this example, if I see a policeman, if there's a riot going on somewhere, mm -hmm. the moment I see the vehicle of a policeman, whether in London or in America, I know, okay, they've got, they've got it covered. If there's a riot somewhere, when I see the police, what will I do? You will run away. Take off. You will take off because you don't trust that institution. Is there still trust for our police? In, the, in their uniform, they, can, they do anything. They enter into people's cars, which is really very, very annoying, get into people's cars with their gun, and they tell them, pack there, do this. 
there's no more credibility in the system. Mm -hmm. So whether they are spending one trillion, one billion, or one million, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Mm -hmm. the, where, the book says. Where, the, where, the, where the money is going is a rat hole. So no matter how much money you spend there, it's going to go down as if nothing has been spent. Mm -hmm. It's a whole institutional shakeup that needs to be done. When the security companies that everybody is employing now, they can do it with these young people. Why can we not, which I know in this country we can, let us look at our security system in that way. Let police be police indeed. Let the army be army indeed. Mm -hmm. when, I, when we went to school, and when we were younger, in secondary school, and even university, when you see the children of a serviceman, you see their character. You see the way they keep their things. You see how neat and tidy they are. You will know this girl's father is a policeman or this girl's father is in the military because you see it in their conduct. The conduct of the father reflects on the children. These days, you don't. You don't know the difference. You don't know the difference between the police I'm surprised to and... hear this part. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> wow. All right. So we'll move away from that story now. Uh, let's take a look at other stories on the, the newspaper that's making the headlines. So uh, there's something on Senate Others uh, Probe on Jonathan. The I reps invite IG, the Counts Day of Prayer, and lots more. There's something on Adoke and coronavirus. And so... Uh, let me start with you again because uh, Anna just finished saying something. Well, I, you know, sometimes we look at the the way our government talk about corruption, and you look at the who are the abinga of this corruption itself, mm -hmm. and look at the history when they are, when they, when the, an administration leaves power, then you look you now, you know, con, you know when you conduct the post mortem of that administration, you now see that you are just living in a deceitful world, mm -hmm. and that talks about the issue of Jonathan. Being, paper, being called on on mm. the on the on the on the refinery, the, on the refinery repairs. repairs and uh, yeah. million dollars. you you compare the refinery repair, repairs to the similar scenario we are having over thirty seven billion to repair the national assembly. Yeah, it's a recurrent corruption, recurrent decimal that we are just bound to be to be a dying nation. It's as if some people be. are deliberately <laughs> are deliberately orchestrating this evil at us, throwing every jab at us that these people are vegetables. They don't know what they want. They just, when election comes, it's the only ritual that, that brings us closer, or even a little bit closer to democracy. And after the matter of that ritual of election, it becomes their own daily business. And this is the scenario. For me, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a call to to duty for all Nigerians to begin to understudy are we really prepared for this journey called democracy? Because if it is our duty, if we have a civic responsibility, then we have to begin to learn how to choose right. We don't have to, if you don't, if she has mentioned it, the foundation, mm -hmm. if it is destroyed, we have a, 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 a weak foundation as a nation forever we'll still be looking at this as something will definitely be you know there are a lot of us trading mm. on religion on political line on different approach if you if, if they bring Jonathan now for 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 legal for prosecution you mm. begin to hear the salsa people shouting our man is dying just like what a, you know it's, it's been our nature that power corrupt and absolute power corrupt That's absolutely right. but when our institution have been galvanized with right laws and enforcement, in China you can't commit this and go scot free. Mm -hmm. That's what makes the government more viral. But in our own land, every man, all man for himself, and Not the government <laughs> believes that yes. If you are the party man and you have a hand in this court, now it's not becoming negotiation. For you to be free and for your record of sin to be kept clean, you must jump ship to, 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 the, to, the, to the ruling party. So to me, it's an endorsement and it's, an, it's, a, it's against that promise of the change mantra that we were looking at in 2015 before we got to the next level. Mm -hmm. The next level now has just, is just teaching us where are we at the moment, and it calls for concern. Mm. If the government is really serious to govern us, and it has shown a lot of laxity, that's why we cannot vouch that the confidence that we repose 
ab initio in Mr. President for coming that, oh, we just needed somebody to whip the, 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 the life out of these mm. criminals. It was as if when the government came in for the past, for the, it, the, it, it's self-inflicting pain. But we cannot just continue to mention it that it really, it really calls for concern. But for me, if anybody is found culpable, if a case is being opened, let that case not be swept under the carpet. Right. And it's right time for law to take it because in order to serve as a deterrent for this present administration. Mm -hmm. And I believe strongly if the if dog eat dog, then we can we that the people can begin to take a very good high mm -hmm. in dealing in dealing with the whole issue at the end of the day. All right. Uh, I will, in the interest of time, we'll take another, <laughs> we'll take another uh, paper. So let's quickly go to the nation, <laughs> the nation newspaper. Again, the big story there is uh, presidency, PDP clash over rising insecurity and governors. Just the matter that we are discussing. And at the top there, Malabu caught others than Etete's arrest on page seven. Adoke and others get bail. It's on page seven of uh, the nation newspaper. Payroll government stops adamant as who members' salary. Is. On page 41, Amotekung has come to say, says Makinde, Oni and Adams call for law. That is on page 44 of the nation newspaper. Uh, Buhari meets service chiefs after lawmakers' protest. Uh, Senate seeks self isolation for travelers from China and others. Uh, Koshoni dies at 77. And that's all that we have on the nation newspaper. Very quickly, uh, Let's take two, we'll take just two stories here. Um, there's something on the payroll. Uh, government stops Adamant uh, as two members' uh, salary. Amoteko has come to stay. Which one do you want to go for first? <laughs> Amoteko. My issue, my view on Amoteko is the, is the idea of the caliber of people that are actually going to run this Amoteko, mm -hmm. that they pay attention to the caliber of people. Now, it's very, it's very good to pay attention to the law. There are so many wonderful lawyers in the South who can do all this. It's very good to pay attention to the law, but pay attention to the people to you the are handling executive. this responsibility to. Mm -hmm. you will, even if a 10-year-old has been watching his dad drive all his life, he's 15 years old and he thinks he can drive, his father is not going to give him a Ferrari and tell him, okay, have, have a field day. I know you can do it. I know you can do it. <laughs> so, who are the people handling this day to day? How trained are they? What what sort of training? What sort of what sort of um, knowledge have they has been passed on to them? What discipline do they have of their profession? Are How far prepared? can they go? Are they prepared? Are they prepared? Is it a matter of also the issue of sh shouting on people, being rude to people, saying that we are security, we can do anything? All that needs to go out. If, for Amotekun to come out, let them come out with disciplined, well-informed people who know about, who have some form of ways of getting intelligence of actually addressing the issues of crime mm. and not just stay there and just feel that because we are empowered, we can enforce that power anyhow we like. Those are the kind of things that people react to. A man saying no to a policeman, he's not saying no to a policeman, mm. he's saying no to the aggression that comes through the policeman. Because nobody wants to, no, nobody wants to be had, um, dealt, given a, a bad blow because of that. Mm -hmm. And if they don't handle that, we're going to come back saying the same things again with headlines of what Amotekun is doing mm -hmm. wrong. So while they are paying attention to the law, also pay attention to the discipline and the character of the people that you're handling this mantra to. Because in the end, they will be the one who will do the they job. Are, they'll, be the, they'll be the face. Mm -hmm. They'll be the face of security. Wow. Good, good intervention there. All right, do you want to say something? Yes, yeah, so, you know the 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 um, the fortunate thing is that I I hold a position in Yoruba. I'm, I'm the president of Yoruba Council of Youth mm -hmm. also, and the the idea of Amoteko, I can tell you to you that I I we we submitted that proposal that brought about the Amoteko, but the way we came about it was um, Operation Folumo. That was sometimes around mid 2019 during May were used to the uh, the harassment and the kidnapping mm -hmm. cases along the corridors of our road from Ibadan to Ife to those axes were wrecked with killings from marauders and Fulani and armed bandits. And that was a call when we met with the Onide and we told them and we gave a seven days ultimatum calling the governor's house that if killings persist, we are going to take a whole lot of 
responsibility on ourselves mm -hmm. to go to those creeks and bring those guys and that led to the summit of the governors in southwest and we had the resolution and through those discourse because it's a child of necessity mm -hmm. that need to be adequate care she has rightly mentioned we gave the, the rules of the how this thing ought to be it's not the way you know it's not a political thing that anybody should be looking to score any cheap uh, um, political uh, mileage on because lives are involved mm -hmm. so we believe that it should be tailored one there should be legislation from the state the rules of engagement will be strict discipline training and the recruitment then funding we also propose the southwest security trust fund mm -hmm. because if you have it launch it today and there's no lifeline to support it along the line if one governor fell short of his own contribution tomorrow what about a community lifeline that we have corporate multinationals that need to take this up as their CSR, a lot of people will be interested in, but if there is no proper management, these are areas we're able to propose for funding and, and equipping that arm. But then also, the, those that will really need to be called on first are people with experience of the native intelligence. Mm -hmm. In Yoruba land, we have, which has always been part of our community, we have a way of securing our land. So this should be involved if it is OPC, if it is the hunter, if it is vigilante, if it is just ordinary community people. It's everybody's responsibility. I'm, uh, the, the vision is to carry everybody along, including non Yorubas, mm -hmm. for intelligence sharing with the, with the, with the conventional security outfit. All right. All right, let me just hear your final thoughts. This is just where we're going to wrap up. <laughs> let me just hear well, your final thoughts on uh, any of the matters, and then we'll, we'll wrap up. So. The bottom line is that Nigerians want to feel safe. Yes, I agree. We want to go to bed at night and feel safe. Whatever the government needs to do, they need to address it from the point of giving, um, uh, eliminating our fears mm. and giving us assurance that we live in a secure society. I want to be able to travel from one end of Nigeria to the other without the fear that, oh, I cannot go. We all cannot do everything we need to do in this country in one state. Mm -hmm. It's just not possible. You will need to reach out to the others, to the north, to the south, to the east, and the west. For us to do that, the government needs to actually step up and actually secure the environment, actually secure us and remove the fear, right. which I know as a nation is We're possible capable. to do. All right. Thank you, Anihu V. Ayeni, the social commentator, for your thoughts and all the comments. And then, of course, Barrister Dotun Hassan uh, sure. for bringing more perspective to of the press this morning. And this is where we are going to call it a wrap. We will continue this Monday to Friday, every day on Plus TV Africa, at the same time, which is 8.30 a.m. I am Amaka Okoye saying have yourselves a great day.